Thank you very much. My name is Engineer Dr. Chukuma Chidese Kachi, a retired Commissioner of Police. While in the police, I was a Commissioner of Police in charge of Police Procurement Department, later on Commissioner of Police in charge of Police Housing Department. And while still serving, I won the Inspector General of Police Letter of Award for Excellence in Service. Fellow Institute of Directors, Fellow Nigeria Institute of Management, and alumni of Lagos Business School. I'm a procurement expert and an expert in public-private partnership. I have a PhD in civil engineering, specifically water resources. Well, infrastructure may be defined as the basic physical and organizational structure and facilities needed to operate a society or enterprise. Now, examples of infrastructure are buildings, roads, water supply, infrastructure, power supplies, etc. They are very, actually what I've mentioned are all economic infrastructure. Infrastructure are actually divided into two. Economic infrastructure, that is those infrastructure that help business activities. The rest, such as schools, hospitals, are regarded as social infrastructure. The Nigerian population started, the one I met was 60 million in the 60s. Now we understand we are almost uh, 300 million. Needless to say, the need for more infrastructure is getting greater and greater. Unfortunately, due to the dwindling government resources, financial resources, we have not been able to bridge the gap between what is required and what we can do. And this is actually where public-private partnership come in to help us bridge the gap. Well, capacity building is a question of strengthening the capacity of people involved in the provision of infrastructure to make it easier for them to do so. I would say there's adequate capacity building. My infrastructure actually I'll be referring more to civil engineering structures, which is actually my area of uh, convenience. You talk of roads, water, and so on. The institutions, especially the universities, have been turning out engineers. Nigeria Society of Engineers on our own, we have been doing training and retraining. Korean Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria has also been playing its part because the government regulator for engineering projects. So these are all capacity building structure that have made provision of infrastructure easier. But, I said the, but as I said, the main problem is finance, is the underlying problem, finance. As you know, there are different factors when you are talking of production or management. Um, you, you have different aspects of management, financial management, and uh, human resources, strategic and all what not. But as they say, financial management is the only part that is greater than the whole. A part can never be greater than a whole. Finance is the only part that is greater than a whole. Once the finance is not, the everything comes to an end. So that's the problem we're having in infrastructure, lack of adequate funding. Thank you very much. This is where private, public private partnership come in. You see, public private partnership is all about business relationship between the government and the private sector. Now, where you use PPP, you use it on those projects that can deliver themselves. Those projects that on their own are financially viable. Then you now save money from them and use those money, that money on rural areas where projects cannot be financially viable. For instance, Legacy by the Express Road, there's no reason for Nigeria to spend one naira from budget on it. The entire money spent on Lagos Express Road 
about 400 billion, could have been used on Arura roads. The entire money spent on Lagos, on uh, Enugu Onitsha Road, Enugu Portacot Road, Onitsha Oware Road, Bini Shagamu Road, Abuja Kaduna Kanu Road, all those money put together could have been used in infrastructure to the rural areas, like water supply, light, and all whatnot. So that is where public-private partnership comes in. It enables us to allow the private sector handle those infrastructure that are financially viable, while the government handles those that are not financially viable. The benefits of PPP are many. First, the project will be completed on schedule. Lagos in Bad Express Road, they have been building it since, uh, I think, 2009. Now it's about 13 years. The 120-kilometer road, that is 10 kilometers per year. That's not the way to construct. With PPP, it will have been completed in two or three years, or even one year. Because in PPP, the investor is only paid when he starts delivering services. So there's an incentive for him to complete the project on time, and in fact, earlier than the schedule. So if we go by PPP, all these roads I mentioned, Lagos, Ibadan Express Road, even this Abuja Kanuna Road, it would have been completed within two, three years, and people will start using it. That is very important. And in PPP, um, it controls corruption and fosters transparency. You can't inflate contract in PPP. In traditional procurement, by the way, PPP is a method of procurement. Doing, going through budget is traditional procurement. In traditional procurement, contract can be inflated for government officials to share the money. But in PPP, nobody will borrow money and they go and sh start sharing among the government officials. It's not a mad person. And actually, this is one of the reasons that PPP has been having problems all over the country. Government officials don't really like PPP. Because one, it uh, affects what they believe they should get. Two, they wrongly believe that PPP means the end of contract. They are awarding, which is not. PPP can only cover about 20 or 30 percent of our projects. The rest will still go by the traditional procurement, which we call contract. So these are the things that have made PPP not gain wide acceptance the way it should. Anytime I pass that legacy by the express road, I always feel pain. Since 2019 date, we are still working on it. 13 years on a 120 kilometer road. Nobody works that way. So PPP has a lot of advantages. They will pay. But what they are going to pay is minimal compared with what they are suffering. Like Abuja Kaduna Road, at least the area I've seen, Suleja side, is very bad. Motorists will be ready to pay. In fact, the last time I traveled by my, using my vehicle was, uh, I think, 2016 or so. I lost the gearbox on my vehicle, which I spent almost uh, 400000 to replace. Of course, it would have been better for me to have paid the five, ten thousand um, to and fro and come back than losing that kind of thing. And I also know somebody's vehicle from just going from Enugu to Onitsha. Somewhere the road was bad. The vehicle had a problem in a very bad aspect of it. He repaired it. He spent almost half a million naira on the vehicle because it's an automatic Mercedes. Of course, it's not even as good as it was before. So the person would, eat, would definitely would have preferred paying uh, one or two thousand and going to Onitsha and coming back. So I know people will not be happy to pay initially. But once they start using the road, they will be happy. Yes, we have the in ICRC, Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission. The headquarters in this Abuja. They are the regulators of PPP, promoters of PPP, and facilitators of PPP. But as you know, Nigeria is very wide. Nigeria is wide, no doubt. So they are trying their best, but actually they have not gone as far and deep enough as they should for the simple reason that Nigeria is very wide, both in number of human beings and space. Not yet. The room was not built in a day. A child does not wake up and start running the first day. Not yet. They are still far from where they should go. They have a lot of ongoing projects. If you go to their website, you have always 200 ongoing projects. 
since uh, 2017 or so. Some are still at development stage, that's the very beginning stage. Some are still at procurement stage, that they are trying to get concessionaire and so on. These projects should have been completed by now. What I mean, implementation should have started. But because of a number of factors which may, time may not allow us to go into, they are still there hanging. Well, the government does not really keep to the agreement in terms of payment. Because the agreement contains when a contractor should be paid, when it gets to a stage in construction. The government has not been keeping to it, which as I said, is a product of dwindling financial resources. That is the main reason why we have abandoned projects. According to the Institution of Quantity Surveyors, we have about 13 trillion abandoned projects in Nigeria. About, and the number, there are about 52,000 of them. The main reason is lack of money. If you are traveling, just be looking left, right. You see roads not uh, done. The contractors are not there because they are being owed. You see water supply projects abandoned. Abandoned projects everywhere. Even government buildings within this which I see them abandoned. The problem is lack of money. And this is where, this is why we are calling on government to adopt the PPP model to help them out of this quagmire. The way forward is massive promotion of PPP by ICRC among government officials. As of today, many government officials don't, work, don't actually welcome PPP. I think the minister in charge of rules has not, did not welcome PPP or has not welcomed PPP, whichever is the correct tense to use there, because he has been there for seven years plus. I think they have about 90 days to go. And no single road has been concessioned. Which to me is lack of determination on his part to concession the road. Because if actually he believes in PPP and wanted the roads to be concessioned, this thing could have been done within his first four years. But now we have a few days to go, and not a single road has been concessioned. Okay, sir. On the aspect of the well, flood, there are no monocausal factor for flood. Many things, many factors are responsible for the flood we, we have had. They have, been, uh, they have been identified, or they have been identified by the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and I know they are working on them. So once the paper is out, I'll, I'll be in a better position to make an informed statement. But right now, I can't just beat about the bush and talk about uh, climate change, talk about uh, what are being released from them by Cameroons and so on. Investigation is going on by the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and I can show you that when the result is out, will not be disappointed. My advice is that they should listen to the presidential candidates carefully and know who to vote for and vote wisely. Don't vote based on sentiments that this is our man, is from my place, or this or that. Don't be induced by any financial motivation or resources. These ones can't last more than uh, three or four weeks and it's over. Vote wisely. Because according to Peter Drucker, there are no underdeveloped countries. What we have are undermanaged countries. Nigeria has been grossly undermanaged. If you go history, only America developed with the kind of resources Nigeria had. Nigeria has. Britain developed just on coal. Russia, just on wheat and grains. It's only America that had oil, had mineral resources, has fertile land and so on. Just like Nigeria. Nigeria, we have oil, we have fertile land. If you eat mango and throw the seed out of your window, three or four days after you go, you see it has germinated. We have everything, then we have the human manpower. But the problem is this. Poor leadership has truly affected us. And therefore, the solution to our problem is to vote wisely.